Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. Australia's first lunar rover has been named. After a big public vote, the space agency has announced it'll be called... Nat, no spoilers. I'm about to do that. Hey. Oh, OK. Josh wants to tell you. <laughs> yep, after sifting through 8,000 name ideas, including some uh, kind of questionable ones, we finally have our rover name. A combination of the word rover and this famous Aussie animal. It's the Kangarover. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> the Rover. That's what I meant to say. And while it's still in the design stage, the Australian Space Agency says this little Rover is a big deal. NASA's actually flying the Rover to the moon on one of its Artemis missions in the coming years. Australia has never had a Rover land on the moon. It's super exciting. When it finally does get to the moon, Keegan says the rover will be tasked with collecting moon soil called regolith. It will then take the regolith over to another piece of equipment that NASA will have, and then NASA will try and extract oxygen from the soil. Now, the reason that we want to extract oxygen is because it's a vital component in rocket fuel. And he says it's Australia's boldest adventure yet. We really want the young people of Australia, we want everyone who normally wouldn't be super interested in, in what's happening in the space sector to really come with us on this journey. About half of Australia is set to swelter in the first big heat wave of the season. In some places, the temperature's expected to hit the mid-40s, with Outback SA and Western New South Wales copping the worst of it. And as if that's not enough weather drama, there's also a cyclone slowly making its way towards Queensland. But it's too early to know whether it'll do any damage. Ooh, I've got mail! is something you won't be able to say as often next year. Australia Post is making some big changes to its delivery service, and Justina has all the details. <laughs> oh, it's a bill. Ooh. It's not you. You're great. You bring happiness, sometimes disappointment, but I just don't need you as much anymore. I'm sorry. Yep, it seems Australians have lost their love for letters. Which is why Australia Post has made a big decision to stop delivering them every day. They want their parcels on the day, on time, and as many as we can fit in the postage bags. You see, back in the noughties, Australians were getting around nine letters per week. Now, that's only about two. That's mostly because of things like emails and social media, which have made it easier, cheaper and quicker to communicate. This lack of letter sending has hit Australia Post pretty hard financially, with the business recording a $200 million loss last year. On the flip side, as Aussies turn to online shopping, parcel business is booming. So Australia Post has decided to reprioritise their posties time. So they'll still deliver their parcels, express and priority mail every day, but spread out their letter rounds so we only get them every other day. It's been really good and we can also carry more parcels as well. So it's not only good for our customers, it's good for Australia Post as well. From the vastness of space to the far corners of the Earth and Darwin, these next stories all have a certain air of discovery to them. Here in Canberra, a new generation of space telescope has just been unveiled. It uses lasers instead of the traditional radio waves to send and receive data from space, which the team here says is thousands of times faster. We're going to be able to video the next astronauts operating and living on the moon. Now to Antarctica, where the biggest iceberg in the world is on the move. These clips from the team aboard the RRS Sir David Attenborough show the huge block of ice drifting in the ocean. It measures in at 4,000 square kilometres and is thought to weigh about one trillion tonnes. And finally, to Lake Alexander in Darwin, a popular swimming spot that's now closed due to reports of a shark sighting. A shark! Shark? Oh, is there's a shark here in the lake. That's crazy. I'm just wondering how it got in there. The last time a shark was spotted in this lake, it actually turned out to be a milkfish. I suppose that top fin does look a little bit suspicious. But for now, the lake's closed until further investigation. That's a discovery I'm happy not to make. That's all we've got time for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>